Hey guys, Hi. we are here with RJ and we're going to do some questions with RJ on history. Um, he's going to take questions from you guys. Um, let me give you a little background about RJ. He's nine years old. He's an avid youth hockey player and he likes computers and other things are just some of his hobbies. Um, I guess I'll start off um, with the questions. Could someone who's watching tell me if you can hear me? Can you guys uh, give me a heads up or a thumbs up if you can hear me? RJ, sit up. Sit okay. Up. Okay, well, uh, I guess we'll start off. RJ, do me a favor. Uh, I have a sword. Um, why don't you explain, I guess, I don't know, for starters, uh, explain the origin of the Russian Empire. Well, the Russian Empire began as the, the country of Muscovy. It broke up around, like, the 13th century, and then suddenly, under Ivan the Terrible... Ivan the Terrible, it, it was reformed, and by the time of Ivan's death, it was ready to expand into Siberia. Many czars later, we have Tsar Nicholas II, which he married a German wife, and the Tsar abdicated in 1917. They were murdered on July 6, 1918 by the Revolutionary Communist Guards. But, but, but the youngest... But the youngest daughter survived, but she was really poor. She moved to Poland. What happened? So exactly what happened? <coughs> it, collab <coughs> it collapsed under the Russian Empire. I mean, I mean the com I mean the communist Soviet Russia. <coughs> what year was that? 1917 through 1922 was the Grand Revolution that took out the Russian Empire. Well, then what happened after that? Well, it became communist, speed up, they lost a lot of land in World War One because they began to push back. They capitulated the Germans with the help of the British, the French, and the Americans, which is us. <coughs> then we get into a Cold War, almost World War Three, sometime. World War Three? Don't you mean... Well, in the Cuban Missile Crisis, we almost had World War Three, And then we... Then that's the t then when the Boer War wall came down, the Soviet Union came closer to collapse, and on Christmas, nineteen ninety one, they collapsed, and Russia was reformed. Da da. Okay, well, I think you missed a lot of stuff on there, but we'll give you that. Um, if you guys have any questions, RJ, get back down there. I want to see the people. You'll see it. There's there's three people watching, four people. Get down there, big guy. Um, does anyone have any questions for RJ, or I'll just continue to ask questions if you guys don't mind. Um, let's start off with, can you describe, I don't know, uh, the origins of Japan? How did Japan come into existence? Well, Japan was, used to be a kingdom of Tonichiwa. I mean, not Tonichiwa. It used to be a kingdom, and then one day, the palace caught on fire, burned down, and the whole... Jap Japan went into revolution. Everyone was fighting each other until one day, one government overthrew... Oh, one back up. We got a question, RJ. Uh, Terry Weiser, uh, pageant, says, how did we avoid World War III? Well, for starters, we resolved the crisis. Some honorable mentions for World War III is Operation Unthinkable, which was a USA... Which was a joint USA UK plan to invade the USSR and the Cuban Missile Crisis, but the but the plan but Operation Unthinkable was rejected by the British government and and was top secret by the British government. So who was the president at the time? Churchill. No, who was the president of the United States? Um, Harry S. Truman. Oh, what about the Cuban Missile Crisis? Who well, the Cuban Missile Crisis, we were worried 
because the Soviets were f were asking that we give over all of Berlin. So they placed nuclear missiles in Cuba, and uh, for like a week or two, we almost ended up into a nuclear war. And that's when Goshov, the president of the USSR, that all Castro, Gorbachev, or the, go Gorbachev, the well, it wasn't Gorbachev, but continue. Sorry. The leader of the USSR, Cuba, and the USA met to to assure they wouldn't create mad or mutually assured destruction. Okay. Well, let me ask you this: Who was your who's your favorite president of all the presidents? You know, since George Washington, and why? Um, I'm gonna say FDR because he built nukes. Oh well, just kidding. I like FDR because he got us out of the Great Depression. Excellent. Who has been your the most effective president in history, do you think? Either Theodore, FDR, or Obama. Well, don't want to comment any political stuff. No offense if you don't like him. Gotcha. You call him Obama, and so Obama, aren't you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, what do you, who do you feel was our least effective president? Hmm, I have an idea. The, uh, the person before FDR, I think his name was Herbert Hoover. We also had James Buckingham, Frank Pierce. Frank Pierce was just like a celebrity, kind of like Reagan. And, and James A. Buckingham was just like, uh, just make more states, blah. Really? Um, what president... Um, basically, um, helped us, uh, form the country. George Washington, LOL. <laughs> what is, I don't understand this, LOL. Why, Laugh out loud. Okay. Why, why was George Washington effective? Because, one, he created the country. Two, he created, he helped create the Constitution. Three. Well, I don't know if he helped create the Constitution. Yes, he was. He was in the Congress. Plus, you also know James Madison, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson were also there. What do you like about Thomas Jefferson? Uh, he's an architect. He's a he Democrat. Was an he he was in the Democrat Republican Party, which lasted until eighteen twenty five. Oh, he, we got a question. Um, Nancy Sheets asked, "What was Watergate?" Well, it was a scandal between Nixon when. His supporters stole information from the opposing candidate. He said he was not part of it, but a tape showed proof that he was lying. Wait, I think I just plagiarized. I, am I an idiot? I just think... Terry Weissert asked, why do you like history so much? Ah, uh, it's interesting. Are there any other subjects you like other than history? Uh, so, well, science is kind of a minor one. Okay, well we can do a science one uh, later on. But I'm not that really good in it. I just like doing erosion. I just like doing like earthquake and natural disaster things. Also, I just like wrecking cars. Gotcha. Um, when it comes to um, politics, or not necessarily politics, um, do you like Lincoln? You know, what... what 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 would you consider some of Lincoln's significant achievements? Well, first he stopped the country from being divided in two. Well, the country is still divided in two, but two separate nations. And second, and second he was, and he led the Union against the Confederate. Gotcha. Who was Lincoln's vice president? Andrew Johnson, and there's a cool incidence between Lincoln and Kennedy. Lincoln was elected Congress 1846, Kennedy 1946, Lincoln 1960 president, and they all had similar stuff. Similar coincidence, okay. Um, what do you know about Kennedy? I mean, you know... Um... Well, Kennedy, he made a... He had he had a, he was the last president to get assassinated for now, and Aren't... he and he helped resolve the Cuban Missile Crisis. Gotcha. Let me ask you this: uh, Terry's asking a question. Do you think our country is still divided into two? Uh, kind of. 
It's mostly in Chicago and the the, the, the old Confederate states. Which no, no, no. She's, she's asking the question, do you think the country is still divided? Well, um, kind of. I don't really know, but I hope the next president could fix it or I'm going to be like, can we move to Germany? Okay. Indeed. So, you want to take a pass on whether the country is still divided is what you're saying? Kind of. Kind of. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any other questions in history uh, that RJ may answer? If not, I'll continue to ask RJ questions. Um, what, uh, feel free to ask questions on World War II. Let me ask you this. What was your favorite World War II battle and why? Um, well, the most popular battles were Pearl Harbor. I could list a lot of favorite battles. The Battle of El Amain, the Battle of Kiev, the Battle of Berlin, the Battle of... I mean, there was like a small Battle of Paris, the Battle of Stalingrad, which was one of the bloodiest battles in human history. And 